All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing experimental design with distinguish between internal and external validity. We're now getting into some topics that feel much more research oriented and because a lot of cases they are, but don't make the mistake what people do thinking, well, I'm a clinical BCBA. I don't need to know the research terms. You're still doing the same thing in your one-on-one -on -one client interactions as researchers are. You may not just be using internal and external validity on a day-to-day -day basis. Either way, you'll see once we describe and discuss internal and external validity, it still matters and is important to your interventions being successful. As always, we're going to make this as simple as possible. We're getting the videos out as quick as we can. I know everybody's looking forward to the next one. Make sure you're subscribing and liking so you get the updates when they do come out. We put out at least once a week, every Sunday, and we're trying to get out more as we can. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. So let's start with what experimental validity is. Experimental validity is the extent to which an experiment demonstrates a true and functional relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Hopefully you watched the video on the independent and dependent variables. You're now familiar with what the IV and the DV are. And with validity, what we're trying to establish is we have this control over behavior. There's a functional relationship between, <clears throat> excuse me, our intervention and the behavior change. And that's gonna make our experiment or our plan or intervention valid. So we want our studies or our interventions to be both internally and externally valid. So again, don't think, well, I'm not doing research study because essentially you are as a BCBA, you're, you're researching whether your intervention is changing your client's behavior. It's giving you more information for the future on that client and the world around us, the behavioral world. So you want whatever you're doing to be internally and externally valid. Internal validity is focused on control and change within the intervention environment as a result of the intervention. In other words, if this box is our intervention site or our research site, internal validity focuses on everything in here, all the variables, all the changes, Everything's happening within our controlled environment. External validity is everything outside of the experimental setting. So this is more generalization. Now let's start with internal validity. The extent to which an experiment confidently shows that the manipulation of the IV caused a change in the DV and not some other extraneous factor. Remember last time we talked about confounds and extraneous variables. Well, with internal validity, we're trying to show no confounds are coming into play when our dependent variable is changing. We are causing that change. If we can show that, it's a good indication confounds were controlled for. So again, internal validity is everything inside our experimental box. Just what we set up, let's say, in the client's home. Okay, that's our experimental box. Are we controlling the behavior in the home when we're controlling for all these confounds and extraneous variables. Make sure it's our treatment and nothing else that led to the results. What are some common threats to internal validity in ABA? Again, plenty of research terms, but also they apply to your individual clients. Think about all the changes and therapies that many of your clients go to. So let's think about history, other events that occurred during the study. Let's say they changed medication, changed schools, had a breakup, major family event, their dog died, they lost their favorite toy. All these things happen day to day in our clients' lives and can in effect they, how they respond to the environment. Maturation, changes in participants over time. They get older, they naturally develop, they go through puberty. Testing, the effect of repeated measurements on the behavior. Well, once they become familiar with, let's say your reinforcement system, Maybe they respond better or maybe they respond worse to it. Instrumentation, did you change how you measured the behavior, either, either intentionally or not? And then procedural integrity, 
has the intervention been implemented exactly as planned? So again, this might seem like all just research, but if you apply this to real clinical or home-based ABA, these are all things we need to be concerned with as well. Is that internal validity is everything inside of our experimental environment. External validity is gonna be everything outside of that environment. So all the other generalization settings. The extent to which a study's findings can be generalized to other subjects, settings, or behaviors. It's external. Do our results even matter outside of the intervention ex experiment? There's a lot of criticism with social sciences and psychologies, and even though ABA is more of a hard science, there's still a single subject aspect to it where we want to look at how does it replicate? Can it generalize? Because if we do everything in a controlled environment, that's great. If I teach something to someone in a clinical setting, if they can't do it in school or home or Walmart or Target or whatever it is, does it matter? Does it matter outside of just the experimental setting? How can we enhance external validity? Replication, so the most common way, repeat the experiment over and over again, right? Different participants, different settings, different behaviors, different skills. Does it generalize? If it doesn't, then does it really matter? What's the point? We're always looking for that. Does, does it matter? Do our results matter? We want to be effective, okay? And effective means our results matter. So key takeaways, when you're looking at high internal validity, we're looking for tight control over extraneous variables and in turn confounds. We're making the experimental setting artificial intentionally, so we're controlling for everything in the environment as much as we can. And you're really reducing general generalizability, right? And it's kind of a conflict of what we're going for. Why would we wanna reduce generalization? Well. Because we want to prove first that we can control the behavior as long as we are controlling everything else. Once we can do that, then we can shift to more generalization. And so now we're going to a more natural, less controlled environment. And compounds and extraneous variables can be introduced, which right might lower confidence in the functional relation because there's a big difference between the behavior in a controlled setting versus a park with other kids and parents. There's a lot more extraneous variables. But we want both, right? Because we want to see generalization. And if we can get external validity after internal validity, then we can be fairly confident that our intervention was effective. And that's what we're looking for. So internal validity focuses on experimental control. Our external validity is about generalization. Thanks for watching. Again, be sure to subscribe so we can get these out as quickly as possible. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.